tomorrow. And, of course, the Draymond Green suspension. And uh, who better to do that with than the color analyst for the Sacramento Kings, who finally got off her rear end and did some work in the last game. Jeez, way to take a vacation in game one. <laughs> Katie Christensen. Hello, Katie. Good morning. Can I tell everyone? Hey, Dave, how, how's your back? How's your back? I do. I do. I tried yeah. to. Can I tell everyone? Yeah. Uh, well, actually, I should because this will sound bad. Can I tell everyone what you asked me for in the third quarter? Yeah, you can tell them. I don't I, care. I didn't know if that was. As I'm, I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be shamed. <laughs> <laughs> so I told you I threw my back out. Yes. Right? And maybe this is half. I don't know what it was. And I was. I just got back to the seat. I was in a lot of pain. Katie's sitting like uh, I don't know what twenty feet to my left. About we're on the same row. Katie texts me like the most random thing. She goes, can you bring me a hot dog with ketchup? I'm serious. <laughs> she literally goes, I'm serious. Yeah. And I'm like, honestly, it would take me an hour. I would because I normally would. I bring, yeah. I'll bring her stuff. I, I normally would. But in this case, it would, I wouldn't have gotten there probably by the end of the fourth quarter. Wow. Also, though, Katie. True it, friendship. I will say this, though. Even if I was healthy enough to do it and I wasn't on the, uh, the, the uh, injured list, I don't know that I would have brought you one with ketchup. Oh. You know, you know, you're, you know you're an adult, right? Yes, I'm an adult that likes ketchup on her hot dog. Yes, it's illegal. I'm with Katie. Jason, your hard hitting questions yeah. go. No, I'm I'm agreed. I'm yeah. a, I'm the ketchup guy. The yes, guy? absolutely. Um, so it's Katie, hard to transition out of the ketchup, isn't it? Yeah, it is tough. It is. Um, so you're you're we've we've basically all broke this whole thing down with Draymond. Um, now that you've seen even uh, the whole thing live, probably ten times afterwards, just. When it all happened, what was your what was your take on this? Well, I thought it was egregious. Um, it didn't surprise me because it was Draymond Green, and I'm, I think we're all fairly used to his antics. Um, and I don't know, I, you know, you guys, I've been really struggling with with this for the last couple of days. Um, <laughs> literally, like you go on Twitter, you see all the takes, you see what everyone's saying. Um, in support against all of that stuff. And, and it, it, between that and just everything politically on Twitter right now, like it, it made me deep dive into like, you know, Instagram reels of kids hugging each other and DIY projects and like animals being rescued. You know, it's like, it's a cesspool right now. And I, I think when it comes to Draymond, we're very used to it, which by the way, is why he got suspended. And if people can't recognize that a player jumping up onto the visiting team bench, grabbing his, you know, himself, um, gyrating at the fans, uh, everything he did afterwards. This is a product of what he's always been and what he's always gotten away with. And to be honest, even if they had just given him a flagrant one, he really should have been ejected anyway, because that should have been his second flagrant one. Um, Earlier in the game, he, you know, throat punched Trey Lyles on a rebound and got away with it. A lot of the stuff that Draymond does, he gets away with, which, by the way, isn't just Draymond. It's a lot of players. Sorry for the helicopter going over my house right now. Um, but it's, it's just to me, like, I don't understand people that are upset. I understand people that are upset that are Warriors fans. Um, but there's no there's no place for it in this game. And it's it's disturbing because what it is really, really doing is it's taking away from the fact that this has been a phenomenal series. The teams have, it's been exciting basketball. It's been the best series so far, in my opinion. And that is not a, a purple goggle bias. That is just watching all the games. This has been a phenomenal series series between these two teams. And unfortunately that's what we're talking about right now. And that's what we're probably going to be talking about for a while and if the kings win the series they're going to point to this ejection that wasn't fair and so on and so forth but the reality of the situation is when you have a grown man that is unable to control his emotions then you know i can't remember who it was uh acho yesterday on, on twitter like, he's, he's, yeah he's playing he's he's playing the idiot tax stupid tax and i could yeah I, I couldn't agree with that anymore he is he's paying the stupid tax because this is not like it's not like this is Harrison Barnes for example and that's just obviously I know he's got two technical fouls in his entire career this is a a, a series of repeated outbursts um things that are not okay and then you know he did 
Draymond Green did something way more egregious in terms of grabbing someone's leg uh, against Denver. Uh, it was uh, it was Aaron Go- um, Aaron Aaron Gordon. It's not Gordon. It's not Gordon. Um, yeah, you know the guy that uh, came from uh, Orlando. Yeah, Aaron, Aaron Gordon. Gordon. That's Aaron Gordon. That's Aaron it Gordon. is Aaron Gordon. Yeah. Okay, and to me, it's like wow. Like how can you how can you do these things? But he didn't stomp on you. You know what I mean? Like you grab someone's leg egregiously, not like as you were rolling, protecting your face. Um, and it's just, I think that by the way, I think that, that the Kings players have handled it in a classy fashion. And I, I also think that has a lot to do with their success in this, in this series, because so much of the tactics of, of the Warriors, i.e. Draymond Green, who leads the, the pack is the mental warfare of the series. And the Kings have been too poised and too impervious to all of that stuff. And that's why they've been able to have the success that they've had. Katie Christensen with us. Here's what she was referring to with Emmanuel Acho. Draymond Green officially suspended. I had to walk outside of my dinner reservation for this one. He got to pay the stupid tax. I'm not surprised he got suspended. He has to pay the stupid tax. What is the stupid tax? If you are stupid enough to step on a guy and get caught in 4K on national television, yeah, you're going to get suspended. I'm not saying that it's Draymond Green's fault. I'm not even saying that Draymond Green started it. But we learned in pre-K, it's the second guy who gets caught. Draymond, all he had to do was fall to the ground, clutch at his ankle, and Sabonis would be suspended. But instead, now he's suspended when his team's already down 2-0. When will he learn? 2016, NBA Finals, Game 5, suspended. They lose when they were up 3-1. Kevin Durant, Draymond Green, beef when they had won two chips in a row. Then you win a chip and the West is wide open and you punch Jordan Poole in the face. And now look at you, down 2-0, getting suspended, about to potentially be down 3-0. He's paying the stupid tax. And it makes you wonder, Katie, too. I I don't even know if I'm necessarily comfortable with the narrative that, like, Sabonis was being crazy dirty and now – and and I get it. And as a Kings fan, I'm actually willing to allow it just for the sake of argument. But it's it's just – it's funny. Funny is the wrong word. It's just weird. It's strange. It's always Draymond, as if there's a conspiracy because of nothing, that it's Draymond. Always it's – always Draymond Green. At some point, you just look at the guy, and I, I was a Warrior fan, Katie. That's who I'm pissed at today. I'm pissed at Draymond for letting yeah. us down again. Yeah, I, I understand that train of thought 100%. And you, like I said, I, I'm very I'm very puzzled at the the number of players who have come out on, on Twitter and said, I can't believe that he's getting suspended. You know, I don't think anyone would have a problem with him getting suspended if it wasn't a playoff game. So what's the issue? So, so you're allowed to get away with more during the playoffs because there's more on the line. Yeah. When there's more on the line, you have to be able to control your emotions in a better way. Yeah. And so it's, it's puzzling to me. And if it were your teammate, if it happened in, in the game against you and it was your teammate that got stomped on, would you still come out on Twitter and say, oh, I can't believe that I can't even believe he got ejected, let alone suspended. It's like, are you kidding me? So I just, the narratives right now are really difficult, you know, not to mention I'm super disappointed in, in just kind of oddly, like the, the weird media infighting in this series, like media members getting on Twitter and arguing and, and pointing stuff out. It's like, grow up. Like, this isn't about you. This is about the game. And if you can't talk about the basketball and you have to break it down where you start, you know, eating at each other, it's just, it's shameful to me. And it's, you know, yeah, I be mean, mature on social media. Like I agree. People need to grow <laughs> up. Well, yes, 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 yes. Katie, as far as the basketball part of this, then uh, take us through both sides. Kings have some advantages here without Draymond Green being in there. And certainly the Warriors will try to still win a game without a very important piece. How does each side, you know, we're all keep talking about this suspension, but those guys all have to move on. How do the Kings and Warriors now approach game three? Well, the crazy thing is we all know kind of throughout the league what it's like when uh, you face a team where they don't have their, their full strength, right? It's always a little bit risky for, you know, the, the opposing team because, you know, it changes things. You've been scouting um, a certain way to play with their normal rotation, their normal arsenal. And then the big question is like, okay, are we going to see more of, of 
Jonathan Kuminga? Are we going to see more of Moses Moody, who really played in the second half of that game for the first time um, in the series? And and so it's. I think that one of the things the Kings have done really well is they've just consistently played their style. And defensively, they've been way better in this series than we've seen them throughout the season in terms of consistently playing for 48 minutes. And a lot of that is the product of facing the same team in a seven-game series where you can game plan for just that. You can make the adjustments and you, you know, there's the the familiarity with, you know, uh, Mike Brown and his staff. And so that also plays into it in terms of what the Kings have done. And I feel like um, um, Davion Mitchell has been phenomenal. He's been phenomenal in this series defensively, and I like what they've been doing. We've never seen the Kings play a box and one the entire season. They played it twice sporadically, um, mixing it in on different possessions defensively. I think they've done a really good job of making Steph Curry work, and that's all five guys on the floor. And that still is not going to stop Steph Curry. It's just making him work. And as the series you know, kind of drags on, that kind of stuff, builds up it, it, it accumulates in terms of the overall effect it's going to have on a player so the kings to me they've done a really good job of just offensively um playing with pace motion they're turning the the warriors over which they they're they had the the most number of turnovers average per game in the entire nba in the regular season that's not really going to change in the postseason right so they're turning them over at a, a really high clip and they're they're able to really capitalize off of those turnovers and score without a, a set defense. So, you know, I think that it's, it's been fun to watch the basketball, these two incredibly intelligent head coaches with, you know, great familiarity of each other, just playing chess out there. And it's been fun. Katie Christensen with us. We are out of time. Thank you so much on the text line. And I agree with this. Draymond Green puts ketchup on his hot dogs. Oh, I think that's probably a fact. then he enjoys them. He he probably puts onions on his. Let's be honest. Onions, yeah. hey, onions on a hot dog, are fantastic. <laughs> Katie, thank you so much. Uh, we'll see you for uh, game three, and uh, I imagine it's going to be quite cramped uh, at those studios uh, as well. Hopefully, though, at Chase Center, they make some room for you. No cowbells, though, not allowed. <laughs> You guys have a good one. You too. Thank you. you. We'll take a break. When we come back, let's uh let's let's a lot of stuff to talk about there. We'll reset everything and then we have some audio. Adrian Warjanowski getting uh response from the league, giving us a little more insight on today's suspensions.